talk, shop, pop, movies. Oh, hey there, this is Derek, the Convicted Cinephile, and if you're a Convicted Cinephile yourself, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel down below. On my channel, I like to talk, shop, and pop, open, that is, movies and physical media. And this week is like the official Guild nomination announcement week of the year. Every day this week, more or less, um, some sort of major guild, which makes up, you know, parts of the Academy, hence the Academy Awards blah 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 is announcing their nomination so it gives you a look into what will probably be nominated <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> came out of nowhere uh for the oscars uh today i waited until they all got announced because i knew there was three coming up and they all did we have the adg the art directors guild we have the mpse which is the motion picture sound editors and we have the a SC, the American Society of Cinematographers. So that's the cinematographers, sound editors, and art directors guilds announcing their nominees. And then tomorrow we have the Golden Globes and the 11th the Screen Actors Guild Awards, I believe, are announcing. The DGA is this week. The PGA, I believe, is this week. I, I, I'd have to double check. There's a lot of them. A lot of shit comes out this week. So hence why I named this guild awards week episode one because there's going to be at least one more <laughs> so instead of editing and doing a whole bunch of malarkey i figured i would just record it stream yard wise and then uh edit it here and there after the fact so i will go in order of uh what they were announced and we'll bring up the art directors guild first when we do this there we go so on awards daily it's just the easiest place to find all of them at once so the cool thing well it's good and bad i guess for the art directors guild is that they have separate genres so they have like one for you know old-timey kind of movies one for fantasy movies one for modern movies because a lot of uh newer style movies don't get nominated i don't know why i can't think of the word to describe it but we'll see in a second period feature that's the old one so Nominees for feature film, period feature, All Quiet on the Western Front. Having finally seen that, yes, absolutely, that movie is fantastic. Babylon, I knew that was getting in. Elvis, yeah. Fablemans, yeah. White Noise, I guess it is period. It's just kind of funny because it's like sci-fi period. Uh, but I get it. That's a good nomination for that, actually. So <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised if four of these five were the Oscar nominees. Like All Quiet, Babylon, Elvis, and the Fablemans, I could easily all see getting in. Babylon should for sure. I'm mean, like, if it's going to win anything, it's probably that at the Oscars, to be honest. But we'll see. Elvis was pretty good production, uh, art direction wise. So, fantasy feature film, of course, we have Avatar in there, which won the uh, production design Oscar. My glasses are so foggy right now. I can't see anything. I already can't see anything. And then when my glasses get foggy, I really can't see anything. It's fun. It's fun stuff. Ugh. <sighs> All right, fantasy feature film, where were we? The Avatar, yes. The Batman absolutely deserves recognition, so that is cool. Black Panther, the original film, won the Oscar for, just like Avatar, for art direction. Everything Everywhere All at Once absolutely deserves to be nominated for this. And Nope, good. It's kind of an interesting one for art direction, because I know they had to like build the whole thing from scratch, which was cool, like the ranch and the house and the little theme park and such. So that is very neat. Contemporary, that's the word I couldn't think of for some reason. Contemporary feature film. We have Bardo. I haven't seen Bardo. It's a, the Mexican film that's potentially nominated for the Oscars. Bullet Train, that's a good one because just concept-wise, that's cool. Glass Onion absolutely deserves recognition for modern films, contemporary films. Tar has very good art direction. I wasn't the biggest fan of the movie the first time I watched it. Or having only seen it once, I should say. But everything about it is good. I just wasn't into it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Top Gun Maverick. Sure, why not? But it's good. It shows that it has uh, support even in the art directing branch of the Academy to squeak in here. I doubt it'll get an Oscar nomination for its art direction. It's pretty basic, in my opinion. But it has support, so that is neat. Animated feature film, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. I would love if this got nominated at the Oscars, but I really don't think it's going to anymore. Uh, Lightyear, I guess. Marcel the Shell with shoes on, Puss in Boots, and Turning Red. So more or less, give or take a Lightyear, the, what will probably end up being the nominees for Best Animated Feature at the Oscars. 
But Pinocchio, being a stop motion film, absolutely deserves recognition at the Oscars for its art direction. I I believe I'm gonna skip the camera or the camera stuff, the TV stuff, because I just I just do movies. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about if I talk about TV shows. I've watched like two TV shows in the last two years. Let's go to the MS PSE. Too long of an acronym. I can't even remember what it is. Motion Picture Sound Editors. It's the seventieth annual one of these. That's impressive, actually. Outstanding achievement in sound editing, feature dialogue, and ADR. You got Banshees. I'm actually kind of surprised Banshees wasn't in the Art Directors Guild one, because that has really good art direction, so that's kind of too bad it's not in there. Hmm, that should have been in period instead of white noise, probably. So that's that's probably the first thing it's missed, I, I would say. But Banshees and sound editing? I was, I'm more surprised to see it in sound editing than I am to see it in our direction not in our direction batman for sound editing absolutely elvis i guess it's more sound mixing but i get it empire of light that's i haven't seen that but that's i didn't expect to see it here that's for sure um everything everywhere all at once i absolutely expected to see here and top gun maverick makes sense outstanding sound editing in effects and foley so essentially this is actual sound effects and sound effects recording and creation so Avatar is here. That makes sense. Batman absolutely makes sense. Everything Everywhere All at Once makes sense. Jurassic World Dominion. Gotta make all them dinosaur noises. So that makes sense. And Nope. I'm glad to see Nope here. Nope has very good sound. That is cool. And Top Gun, of course, for sound editing. That makes the most sense. It's too bad they don't have a sound editing Oscar anymore. Like I said in my last video. Um, outstanding achievement in sound editing for animation. So we got DC Super Pets, I guess. Pinocchio, obviously. Lightyear. Puss in Boots. There's less nominees because there's obviously less movies to pick from, so that makes sense. Um, outstanding music editing. Elvis, duh. <laughs> that's an obvious one there. Um, Everything Ever All at Once. That's a good one for them. It said on the top that they had the most nominations out of any movie here. So I'm guessing that Top Gun does not make it into this category. Because <clears throat> it's already alphabetical and I can see the bottom. Uh, Pinocchio. That makes sense. It is a quasi musical tar i mean yeah uh, yeah because of the orchestration music that makes sense there's not really a score to the movie but if you're considering the music that the movie is about yes it makes sense and the whitney houston movie got in something good for them <clears throat> once again it makes sense because it's a musical biopic movie achievement in sound editing for documentary we have good night oppie which is not on the short list for the oscars and that's like the one apparently everybody likes but it somehow didn't make it in. Louis Armstrong's Black and Blues, that makes sense. It's about a musician. Moon Ace Daydream, what I just said. <laughs> the Territory, and that is it. That is it. Outstanding Achievement in Sound Editing for Foreign Language Film, All Quiet, obviously. lots of It's a war movie, a World War One movie. It's got some kick-ass sound in that movie. Argentina, 1985, Bardo, Eo, and The Quiet Girl, and Triangle of Sadness. Yes, I always forget that's a foreign movie because it has Woody Harrelson in it. That is all for the movie categories. So let's pop onto the cinematographer nominees. Ba, ba, ba. Well, they, they have uh, Empire of Light here, which means the Deacons must have got in. But who do, who who doubts the Deacons? I don't I don't know why. Empire of Oh, they're just all right here. <laughs> I thought they were going to be longer. Empire of Light, Roger Deacons, Batman, good work there. Craig Frazier, Bardo. Very good cinematography in Bardo from what I've seen. Top Gun, which has been winning like every cinematography critics award there is to win. Elvis. Really? For cinematography? Over at Nope. Nope should be here. Nope has such good cinematography. Um, no Tar. I expected Tar to show up here. No Babylon. I would have expected Babylon to possibly show up here. So interesting picks. I definitely don't think these are the five that are going to be at the Oscars. I absolutely do not expect that. But Elvis has made all three of these guilds so far. And so has Batman. So that is cool. And so has Top Gun. Something to think about. Cool. That's it. La -di da So like what I said, we learned something. Babylon was not there for cinematography. And it has very good cinematography. So the fact that it's not there shows that it has some weakness. Not that anyone expected it not to. It was there for art direction, which is like the one guaranteed category it should be nominated for at the Oscars outside of score, I would say. 
Batman being on all three of these is nice to see the Batman getting recognition at least somewhere, even if it just ends at the Guild Awards. Very deserved nominations, nonetheless. And Top Gun, it was obvious it was going to hit the sound ones. Cinematography makes sense because it's been winning all the critics ones. Uh, but art direction is not something I expected Top Gun to be on. So good for them. Like I said, I wish Banshees would have made it for the period art direction over maybe White Noise. But White Noise does have really good art direction from what I've seen. So I can't really argue. I just kind of wish Banshees was on there. It shows some weakness for Banshees. That's all I'll say. But once again, it was on the sound editing one for the dialogue, which makes sense because there's a lot of really good, well-edited dialogue in that movie. So, you know, whatever. All the Oscar nominees may or may not come from these nominations, but that's all I wanted to do today. Tomorrow, I'll, maybe I'll do a quick uh, final predictions for the Golden Globes today as well while I'm sitting here doing stuff. But for this video, that is all I'm going to do. So. Once again, my name is Derek. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for all of you folks who've been watching my Oscarology series of videos on top of my normal uh, awards coverage like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Shop, pop, movies.